Hello YouTube, today I'll be showing you the best method for using scavenging perk, and so this requires you to be in a clan. The clan also must have a battlefield set up, but the citadel tier does not matter. Although if you do have a higher citadel tier, then it does increase the number of preset slots. So you'll pretty much be killing monsters inside the battlefield. In order to set up the battlefield, what you're going to do is right click and talk to the battlemaster. Then you'll select edit the battlefield, and you'll get an interface to set up the battlefield. So you'll see a map of the battlefield to customize. You can add or remove elements from the battlefield. So you left click on the element and select any square within the map. So I'm going to explain later how I'm building mine, but first, let's explain the important elements. So the first section is the architecture section. I have the neutral portal, and that is the battlefield exit portal. The tall blocks are basically the wall boundaries. The climbing blocks are for climbing over the wall boundaries. For the toy section, I have the power up stats. You can select what combat skill to increase or decrease the levels, so when a player steps on it, this will take the effect. So for the hazard section, I have the conveyor belt. What ends up happening is, when a player steps on it, it will move in the direction where the conveyor belt is pointing at. So the last section is the monster section, and I have a regular warrior. I mean you can use a blue or red warrior, but I don't really know the difference anyways. You can configure what combat level, spawn rate, and points awarded per kill. Alright, so I'm going to demonstrate my build. So the overall layout of the map, I have the tall blocks for the walls. So the bottom section is the entrance, and I will put the neutral portal next to the exit. Then I make two climbing blocks to enter the middle section. In the middle section, I build this in an 8x8 radius. So this is where the warriors will spawn. You want to put a power up in the middle of the section. For the configurations, I selected the skill as magic, and the effect as 10 increased levels. The respawn time I set is immediate. For the warrior configurations, I'm only using a regular warrior. I selected the lowest combat level, and the spawn rate should be immediate, because that way it spawns immediately after it's killed. For the reward point, I would say 1 point, because that keeps you track of how many kills. So the way I position the warriors is you want to put them around the buff icon. You don't want to put the warriors in the corners, because it'll spawn in the corners sometimes if you're going to put them there. Finally, for the top section, we have the conveyor belt. That is pretty much used for renewing the aggression. So after 10 minutes, the warriors will stop being aggressive. You simply step on it, and it will make the character run by itself in a circle from inside out. The length of the conveyor belt should be at least 10 blocks long. If it's too short, then it will not renew the aggression. So yeah, save this as a preset layout. If you still don't understand what I'm explaining, then I'll leave an image link in the description. So now that I've explained a lot, Let's get into the demonstration. So I'm going to right click initiate battle from the battle master. Then I'm going to select one of my presets for the battlefield layout. Then I select multi combat and that's pretty much all you need to select. So when I enter, make sure everyone else is going to enter as well. I'll explain later why you need people to help. So what I'm going to do is climb over the middle section while everyone else is going to sit behind in the entrance section. There's a 45 second countdown before it starts. And so yeah, just pretty much keep killing the warriors. For my equipment setup, I'm using Mage, because I was told it has the best AoE. The Chinchampas are okay as well, but they only hit 9 targets at a time. What I suggest is bringing a Sun Spear, or any high tier staff. The perks I would suggest are Aftershock 3 and Karaming 3. I actually use my Scavenging perk here, because that was my only Scavenging 3 gizmo. Then finally I have the full Subjugation set, and you can use either Scavenging 2 or 3. For my inventory setup, you don't need to bring aggression potions, because like I said, you're going to be using the conveyor belt to renew your aggression. So what I bring are a lot of magic combat dummies, and I'll explain later why they help here. Then I bring two demon brawler pouches, as well as 500 ring of fire scrolls. So while they're expensive, they help with extra AoE. The air runes are for the air spells. You don't need to be on ancients, because the multi-target does not work with abilities anyways. Then finally I have enhanced Excalibur, and that is pretty much used for extra healing. So I'm going to explain how this whole thing works. The number of warrior spawns will depend on how many players are inside. So there will be 6 spawns for every player inside. In my case, there are 30 spawns. Now the map layout does matter for the spawns, because only one warrior can occupy every square. In this case, there are 36 squares. That means you'll need a bigger map if you want more players for more spawns basically. Anytime a player exits or enters, then a new spawn rate will adjust accordingly. Unfortunately, it kind of sucks, but the other players are going to have to sit there doing nothing. This can really only be sold by one player pretty much. For this reason, it's better that you use alts ideally. The only requirement you need is just owning the membership. 
you can also get friends willing to AFK, so while it's difficult to ask people to volunteer, they can bring remote skills. These remote skills can include broad arrows, curse energy weaving, disassembling noted items, or even protein items. That way it's less of an XP waste overall. Now the list does go on, but yeah, pretty much what I listed are the most notable skills that people use. I had to bring my Iron Man and a few friends in this case. Now the warriors you kill will not give you any combat XP, but it will still count towards the scavenging perk. So remember how I said 1 point equals 1 kill? Well this is how you determine your kill count. Alright so let's get into my action bar. I have corruption blast on the first slot, and you unlock this from raids codex. This is the key to this method, so I highly suggest you buy this from the GE. Then I have dragon breath and chain, and I fill the rest with whatever basics. For thresholds, I'm using detonate and the only ultimate I'm using is Tsunami. Alright so for the strategy, you pretty much stand in the middle, or wherever the buff icon is placed. So you start by deploying the magic combat dummy, and then you start attacking it as your main target. You know how when you sometimes kill a monster and you auto retaliate right? There's like a small delay, and it also commits auto attacks. However you won't face this problem because you're constantly attacking the dummy. The AoE abilities do not damage the dummy, but it will still hit the warriors. So another good reason to use these dummies is because they give you combat XP. Now every 10 minutes you need to renew your aggression, so just step on the conveyor belt and wait until your character steps off. My conveyor belt was too short, so that's why my warriors did not renew their aggression. But yeah, overall this method's very very AFK. I mean you can use tsunami once in a while to like kill them in a linear direction. So I did 20 minutes of this, because the volunteers had to leave early anyways. So in the time I spent here, I killed almost 3,000 warriors. Now if you were to put this in an hour, that's over 9,000 kills with 5 players inside. I'm not sure how many kills you can get with more or fewer players, but feel free to report your results down. The dummies you consume per hour is 18. Since at level 99 magic, each dummy gives you 12.4k XP, you'll be getting 223k magic XP per hour. It isn't good, but I mean it's better than not having dummies at all. So is this worth it overall? For an average player, no, because it's going to be very difficult to set up, especially when you're trying to get volunteers. But yeah, if you do have alts or people willing to volunteer, then yeah, it's absolutely worth it. So last thing, will this method be nerfed because I made a video on it? I'm very doubtful of a nerf, because I mean Jagex hasn't touched their clan code in a really long time. I doubt they even touched their battlefield code ever since this was released. With that being said, their code can be really messy and can take a really long time to fix. Besides, this method's only really good for scavenging components, and it doesn't even offer any combat XP or drops. So one of my friends showed me this method, and he told me to make a guide on this anyways. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask.